All right, and we're back with concept 2.2, solve problems with GCF and LCM. We start with GCF, the greatest common factor, also referred to as GCF, of a set of numbers is the largest factor that all the numbers share, factor being a divisor of an integer. Next, LCM, the least common multiple, also known as lowest common multiple or smallest common multiple of two integers, A and B, usually denoted by LCM, is the smallest positive integer that is divisible by both A and B. So we'll start with the Venn diagram that represents the prime factors of 6 and 8. As we can see, the prime factors of 6 and 8 are 3, 2, and 2. 3 falls in the orange circle under 6 and 2 under 8. We can also see in the green area, there's another 2. And that means it both shared by 6 and 8. 2 is shared by 6 and 8. So what is the greatest common factor of GCF of 6 and 8? Well, of course, that would be 2. Next, consider the pair of numbers 5 and 8. We can do the greatest common factor by simply trying to see which factors are divisible by those numbers. So first, 5 is a prime number. The only factor that we can divide by would be 5, and that will give us 1. In 8, we could divide by 2, it would give us 4. Then we can divide by 2 again, and it would give us 2. Next, the only thing we could divide by would be 2 again, and that would lead us to 1. Next, we can do the multiples of 5 and 8. So we simply multiply 5, plus 5, which is 10, or by 2. 5 times 2 is 10. 5 by 3 is 15. 5 times 4 is 20. 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times 6 is 30. 5 times 7 is 35. And 5 times 8 is 40. Those are all multiples of 5. Next, we do the multiples of 8. 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, 56, and 64. So off of these two numbers, we can find the greatest common factor from the first thing we figured out which would be just one five and eight share the only common factor of one next we can figure out the least common multiple on the next part of these numbers that we figured out which are just the multiples of eight and five and again the first one we see is 40 so the least common multiple would be 40. Next, consider the pair of numbers 4 and 9. So again, we do our graph. 4 divided by 2 is 2. Next, 2 divided by 2 would be 1. That's the last number that we can figure out. Next, we go to 9. 9 cannot be divided by 2, but it can be divided by 3. So 9 divided by 3 is 3. The next number we can divide 3 by is again by itself. That has to be 3, and we are left with 1. Next, we can figure out the multiples of 4 and 9, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, and 36, and 9, 9, 18, 27, 36, 45, 54, 63, 72, 81. With these two graphs, we can now figure out the greatest common factor. So we have to look at 4 and 9, and the only one that they match would be, again, 1. We look at uh, the next graph, which is least common multiple, and we can figure out that the least common multiple there would be 36. And we move on, and now we consider the pair of numbers 11 and 12. So again, 11 is a prime. The only number we can divide by is 11, so that would leave us with 1. 12 can be divided by 2, which leads us to 6. Can we divide it by 2 again? That gives us 3. 3, again, is a prime, so it can only be divided by 3. And that will leave us to 1. Now, with this number, 
we can also figure out that we're missing a factor. The way we do that is we multiply now. We multiply with the left column. First, we multiply by 1. 1 by 12, we have that number. That's the number we started with. 1 by 12 is 12. 3. 3 times what is 12? That we're missing a number. That would be 4. 3 times 4 is 12. So we need to add the number 4 to make this our next factor. 6 times 2 is 12. We have those numbers. So we figured out all the factors of 12. Next, we can find the multiples. So for 11, 22, 33, 44, 55, 66, 77, 88, 99, 110, 121, 132. And for 12, 12, 4, 24, 36, 48, 60, 72, 84, 96, 108, 120, 132. And now we can go back and find the greatest common factor. So again, 11, 12 only share the number 1 as a factor. And we can go look in the other columns and find the least common multiple. Now for this one, it takes a while to find them, but they do share a common multiple, which would be 132. Now we look at a word problem. Gavin is going to take two types of medicine to treat an ear infection. He will take an antibiotic every eight hours and use eardrops every six hours. So if he starts both medicines at the same time, when is the next time he will take them together again? So here we consider the number eight and six for eight hours and six hours. And again, we can find the answer with the multiples. So here, eight, 16, and 24. We know 24 is a multiple of six, so we can then go into the next column, six, 12, 18, and 24. So we can figure out the least common multiple will be 24. So Gavin will take both medicines at the same time again after 24 hours. This is how a least common multiple is useful in the real world. Next, equivalent expressions. So we have the expression 2 parentheses 9 plus 19, 4 parentheses 4 plus 7, 6 parentheses 3 plus 8, and 8 parentheses 2 plus 3. So to make these equivalent, we know that if we have a number in front of a parentheses with no space, that means it's multiplication. So we multiply 2 times 9, and then we have an addition plus 2 times 19. And this is how we do the expression as an equivalent using the derivative property. 4 times 4 plus 4 times 7 would be the next. 6 times 3 plus 6 times 8 would be the next expression. And 8 times 2 plus 8 times 3 would be the last expression. Now we can simply multiply. 2 times 9 is 18. That would be plus 2 times 19, which is 38. So 18 plus 38. 4 times 4 is 16. Plus 4 times 7 is 28. So it would be 16 plus 28. 6 times 3 would be 18. Plus 6 times 8 would be 48. So 18 plus 48. 8 times 2 is 16, plus 4 times 3, which is 24. 16 plus 24 would be the next expression. All these expressions are equivalent. And finally, we can just resolve, resolve these expressions. 18 plus 38 is 56. 16 plus 28 is 44. 18 plus 48 is 66. And 16 plus 24 is 40. All of these equal no matter where you start. Next, two security guards patrol a local business. They begin at the security desk and check back in at the desk every time they complete their patrol loop. The first security guard travels on foot and completes his loop in 12 minutes. The second security guard travels on a scooter and completes the loop in 8 minutes. After they begin their patrol, how many minutes will it be until they check in at the security desk together for the first time? So again, if we remember last word problem, we can just do multiples. 
So 12, because it's 12 minutes, is 12 and 24, and 8 minutes, which we again can go 8, 16, and 24. And we have found our least common multiple, 24, 24 minutes. So that would be our answer. Next, consider the pair of numbers 16 and 40. So again, we find the factors of 16. We can just divide by 2. 16 divided by 2 is 8. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. Now we find the factors of 40. 40 divided by 2 is 20. Divided by 2 is 10. Divided by 2 is 5. And 5 is a prime number. We can only divide by itself. So it's 5 divided by 5, which equals 1. Next, we can multiply to figure out the rest of the factors because we missed some. So 1 times 40 is 40. We have both numbers. 5 times 8 is 40. So we're missing the number 8. We have to add that. So 5 times 8 is 40. We add it. 10 times what is 40? It's 4. We're missing the number 4 again. So we add the number 4. So 10 times 4 is 40. 20 times 2 is 40. We already have that. And 40 times 1 is 1. We have that. The only numbers we were missing was 4 and 8. And we find the least common multiple of both. Again, we just do the multiple of 16, 32, 48, 64, and 80. And now we do 40, 40, 80, and we have found the least common multiple. Greatest common factor. First, we see that the number 8 is there. So we have found our greatest common factor. Remember that we can also see other numbers that are there, like the number 2, but 2 is less than 8, 4 also is less than 8, so we got the biggest number, which is 8, that is common on both. So this time it would be the number 8, even though there are other numbers that are common between them, but we're finding the greatest, the largest number. And finally, we saw that the least common multiple was 80. And we move on to another word problem. Maxwell listed the multiples of 6 and 9 that are less than 100. He underlined all the common multiples. So for 6, was 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, 42, 48, 54, 60, 66, 72, 78, 84, 90, and 96. For 9, it's 9, 18, 27, 36, 45, 54, 63, 72, 81, 90, and 99. All of the common multiples of 6 and 9 are also multiples of 18. As you can see, the underlying numbers, they all share the same amount. So it's 18, 36, 54, 72, and 90. Since the numbers of 6 and 9 are both multiples of 3, all the multiples of 6 and 9 must also be multiples of 3. So that's another conclusion that we can make out of the observation of these numbers. Next word problem. A baker wants to make up as many identical muffin trays as possible using all the muffins he baked this morning. He baked 24 chocolate chip muffins and 64 blueberry muffins. If each tray holds the same number of each kind of muffin and all the muffins are used, what is the maximum number of trays that can be made? So again, for this one, we use the greatest common factor. First, we do 24 divided by 2, that's 12, divided by 2, that's 6, divided by 2 is 3, divided by 3 because it's a prime number, it's only itself, gives us 1. And just to make sure, we have to now multiply 1 times 24 is 24 so we have those two numbers 3 times 8 is 24 so we're missing the number 8 we have to add it 3 times 8 is 24 next 6 times 4 is 24 we're missing the number 4 so we have to add that one too 6 times 4 is 24 12 times 2 is 24 we have all those numbers and 24 times 1 we already have that those numbers too so that is it we found all the factors of 24 Next, we do 64. 64 is an even number, so again, we start with 2, 
So 64 divided by 2 is 32, divided by 2 is 16, divided by 2 is 8, divided by 2 is 4, divided by 2 is 2, and we reached the prime number of 2, so it's only divided by 2 again to reach 1. And now we can clearly see what the greatest common factor of both is, and that would be the number 8. So, out of the question, we can figure out that it's 8 trays. If each tray holds the same number of each kind of muffin, and all the muffins are used, the maximum number of trays that can be made are 8. And again, we go to considering the pair of numbers, now 18 and 24. We will find the factors of 18 by dividing by 2, that's 9. 9 can be divided by 3, which gives us 3 again, and 3 is a prime, so divided by 3 will just give us 1. Again, we need to check our answer, so 1 times 18 is 18. We have both numbers. 3 times 6 is 18. We're missing the number 6. 9 times 2 is 18. So the only number we're missing that we needed to multiply was 6 times 3. And we have to add that to find all our factors. Next, we do 24. 24 divided by 2 is 12. Divided by 2 is 6. Divided by 3 is 3. And 3 divided by 3 leads us to 1. That's all the division. But now we have to check with multiplication. 1 times 24 is 24. We already have that. 3 times 8 is 24. So we have to add the number 8. Next, we do 6 times 4 is 24. We have to add the number 4. And 12 times 2 is 24. We already have the number 2 and 12 and 24. And that leads us to find all the factors of 24. Now we do the multiples. So 18, 36, 54, 72, and 90. For 24, 48, 72, 96, and 120. To find the greatest common factor, we find the greatest number on both the columns of 18 and 24, and that would be the number 6. To find the least common multiple, we find the first number that repeats on the last columns, and that would be 72. We'll do another example. Consider the pairs of numbers 12 and 30. So again, we already did the factors of 12. It's 12 divided by 2, 6 divided by 2 is 3, divided by 3 is 1. We remember that we had to multiply, and we found that 4 times 3 is 12. Now we do the, the factors of 30. 30 divided by 2 is 15, divided by 3 is 5. 5 is a prime, so 5 divided by 5 is 1. Again, to check our answers, we then multiply. 6 times 5 is 30, so we have to add the number 6. 15 times 2 is 30. We have those numbers, and we're done with the factors of 30. For the multiples, we first find the multiples of 12 and 30. Next, we're going to find the greatest common factor of 12 and 30. Again, we just find the greatest factor on both columns, and for 12 and 30, that would be the number 6. For the least common multiple of 12 and 30, we find that the least common multiple is 72. And actually, there is a mistake here because we have found the least common multiple of 18 and 24, which is wrong. Um, but if you have come to this point of the video, you can actually make the columns of 12 and 30 and find the answer and if you can tell your teacher the right answer i'm sure he'll give you extra credit so we found a mistake on this video please get the right answer of 12 and 30 and see if you can get extra credit from your teacher and this leads us to the end of concept 2.2 solve problems with greatest common factor or GCF and least common multiple or LCM. All right, that's it for class. See you later. Bye-bye. So destroy in 10. Please push the red button. Yeah, the red button. Just push it. Yeah, the red button. Push the red button. Okay. Come on. The red button. Push it. You're going to let it self-destruct? If you subscribe, you're forgiven for trying to destroy the world.